Good morning. It's Reverend Tracy Maramuska here from Asylum Hill Congregational Church. I'm the Minister of Mid and Later Life, and I'm really glad you're here joining with joining me today. So today is actually the second to last of our spirituality corners that we're going to hold before we jump into our summer sermon series and some of our summer programming. So I'm really glad that you're here with me today. And we are going to, again, open with just a deep breath, just to try to let go of some of our anxieties and worries and fears, and just to try to be present in this very moment in our bodies, in our chairs. Let us open in prayer. God of grace and compassion, another week has passed. We are missing our family and friends. We are missing our social opportunities on the soccer sidelines, at our various different activities and groups, in our, at even just visiting the library. You know, O oh Lord, that we are getting tired and weary and ask for your strength and help. We're grateful for this time to be present to you and hope that we might learn something new about you and ourselves in this special time. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So today I'm going to introduce you to one of my very favorite stories. So this is a children's book that I picked up, or actually it was a very special gift from a friend, Mommy, uh, Mommy Nishumi from years ago. And this book has within it a very special story that has really stuck with me. And I am going to read that story to you now. It's called The Farmer's Luck. There was an old farmer who had farmed his fields for many years. One day, his horse got away and ran off. When his neighbors heard the news, they came to him with sympathy. Such bad luck, they said. Maybe, the farmer calmly replied. To the farmer's surprise, the horse returned the next day and brought with it three other wild horses. Such good luck, the neighbors shouted joyfully. Maybe replied the wise old man. Early the next morning, the farmer's son was thrown off the horse while trying to train one of the untamed horses and broke his leg. Again, the concerned neighbors gathered and said, what bad luck. Maybe, the farmer said patiently. The following day, officials from the military visited the village to draft young men into the army. They left the son behind because of his broken leg. What good luck, the neighbors exclaimed. Maybe, said the farmer. So this story reminds me that we don't always see the whole picture. That there are times when we think things are just perfect, the very best thing possible. They turn out to maybe not be as good as we expected. And sometimes things that we are sure are going to be terrible and horrible end up opening doors for us that we didn't expect. Now, I am not trying to minimize painful circumstances because there are certain things that no matter how God hard God tries in, as we're told in the book of Romans, we're told that God works good in all things. There's some things that are truly terrible and painful, and I want to acknowledge that. When someone, when we lose someone close to us, for instance, that's not something that we're going to look for the joy or look for the blessing. But in my personal life experience, I have seen this happen to me. There were things I thought were exceptionally wonderful and they turned out not so good. And things that I thought were terrible and turned out to provide opportunities that I did not expect. So what I would love for us to do today is take about five minutes to do some journaling. And now sometimes with people, I will have them write this story over using their own life story. So for instance, you might say, oh, there was a time that I was um, rejected from such and such a university and I thought it was the end of the world, but then I was accepted at such and such place and it ended up being an amazing opportunity where I met my husband or my partner. And so you can try to write this story using your own life story with the ups and downs. Or 
you can simply journal on either things that you thought were going to, were bad and turned out to be okay and also things that you thought were good and turned out to be disappointing. And I would recommend you do that latter part first. So in other words, I would recommend first you journal about things that you thought were going to be good and turned out to be bad, and then take a few minutes to journal about things that you thought were going to be bad and turned out to be good. The point of this exercise is to recognize that if you're like me, you might be tempted to label things as good or bad. Everything in my life, I was like, oh, that's so great. Oh, that's so terrible. But meanwhile, I'm trying to allow myself to be more open to the possibility that I don't see the whole picture. I don't know where this is all going. And that maybe some interesting opportunities can present themselves in both the good and the bad. So let's take a few minutes to do that. And then we'll gather back in about five minutes and debrief. Okay?
So how did that go for you? It's an interesting exercise to think about how things are part of a big picture. And what I don't want to have happen is I don't want for us to not be able to celebrate those good things. To say, you know what, this feels good. This is a good thing. I am excited. This is something I had prayed for and asked for and to celebrate that moment. I want you to do that. And when things are bad and you're full of anger or grief, I want you to feel those feelings too. And what I invite you to do in the meanwhile is in the deep recesses of your heart, be open to the possibility that there could be some growth and some learning and some opportunities that present themselves. And I found this online. It's written by Leslie Dwight. And it's related to this pandemic, right? How is God going to work good in this pandemic? 100,000 people have died. It's hard to imagine, but I'm going to read this poem from Leslie Dwight. What if 2020 isn't canceled? What if 2020 is the year we've been waiting for? A year so uncomfortable, so painful, so scary, so raw, that it finally forces us to grow. A year that screams so loud, finally awakening us from our ignorant slumber. A year we finally accept the need for change, declare change, work for change, become the change. A year we finally band together instead of pushing each other further apart. 2020 isn't canceled, but rather the most important year of them all. May it be so. Thank you again for joining me today. And just a reminder, we have previous episodes, if you would, of this Spirituality Corner on YouTube, on our YouTube channel at Asylum Hill Congregational Church, where we also have other programs and, and our worship services. We'll be live streaming our services at 10 a.m. on Sundays until we go to our summer schedule, which starts on Father's Day. That will then move our services to 9.30 a.m. And again, any of those services you can also watch on demand at your convenience. and in my thoughts and I hope that this week is full of fulfillment, nourishment and peace. Take care.